Welcome to the Dr. Vibe Show, and you are listening to the host and producer of the award-winning Dr. Vibe Show. Always know that you're blessed, highly favored, a magnet for miracles, and a solution for someone's problem. I'm also a certified empowerment coach and president and CEO of Express Your Vibe Coaching Communications, and also realize that the Dr. Vibe Show is the home of Epic Conversations, and I'm the host of Epic Conversations. And one of the Epic Conversations I always like having is part of our sessions called Learn to Be a Coach with my friend, mentor, good guy, and master coach, Steve Kijes. Steve is a co-founder of the CoachTrainingAcademy.com, has been coaching and training coaches for over 15 years. In these series of conversations, I like to start, say, in this journey, we will explore <laughs> many of the nuances and perspectives of being a professional coach. So welcome back, Master Coach Steve. How are we? Thank you very much, and I am doing very well. And I like that you changed that word to journey. Yes. Um, because that is really what we're on. You, as coaches, as people, our lives, we're on a journey. So I, I love that. Thank you. Well, I, I just thought about, you know, mixing it up a little bit and just giving a little bit of a approach. So I'm glad I got your approval on that. So, <laughs> Great. And, well, and like, and like being a good coaching disciple, I adjusted Ah, no, it's great. Great adjustment. Thank you so much. Well, we're going to continue on our journey. And on this episode, we're going to talk about how do coaches offer various services and the, how has that changed or has it changed during your coaching journey? You know, I think uh, it has and quite, uh, quite dramatically that when coaching first started kind of building some momentum uh, 15, 20 years ago, it was really a one-on-one -on -one conversation. It was, you know, sitting down with whoever that is across from you and working out these issues. And, and today that's still probably the, the foundation of what most coaches do. But over time now, we, we have other ways that we can offer our services increase our income, uh, provide value to our clients. And some of these, they're, they make sometimes coaching more fun because one of the things, you know, you know, we, it can be, if we're just sitting across from a client for six or seven hours a day, it can start getting a little tedious after a while. Coaching and fun. Is that <laughs> possible? Is that actually possible? Uh, I would say that the reason we all are coaches is because coaching is fun. It is, um, it's energetic. It brings out the curiosity that we have. It's challenging uh, as if, uh, you know, if we compare it to a game of chess uh, and it's something that's engaging. So I, I call it fun. I enjoy this process, and I would say most professional coaches, too. It's, it's something that we enjoy doing and having this engagement. So, yeah, fun is a great word for coaching. Well, you know what? Maybe we need to do a conversation about how to make coaching fun or how to make coaching enjoyable from a coach's perspective. So we'll put that on the back burner. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we'll certainly approach that conversation on a future episode. But today we're talking about various – various services. And the first one you wanted to share about with our audience is the, f the first one you wanted to talk about was one-on-one. -on -one. Great. So this is, you know, as we had just talked about a second ago, is really when people think about coaching and life coaching or executive coaching, whatever it is, they're usually visualizing themselves sitting next to a person uh, in, in some kind of space or talking to them over the phone or through Skype, et cetera, and providing one-on-one -on -one services. And this is certainly the core of, for most coaches, where they provide the service, getting more of an intimate look at one person's issues and the goals that they want, et cetera, and what we build our practice around. However, I can tell you from experience that after a while doing this day in and day out, it can become, I think, sometimes a, a little stale um, because we're dealing with one-on-one -on -one people all the time. It is also means that the only way that we can generate income 
is by having one person sing in front of us. And so what coaching has evolved into, I, th I would say the next progression of offering service is what we call group coaching. And this is where we have uh, a group of people that come together for common interests. Um, it could be losing weight. It could be changing careers. It could be uh, starting new relationships, things like that. But when we bring groups of people together that have common goals, et cetera, that they're trying to achieve. And these are really can be great ways for both to generate income for coaches, because now instead of just sitting across one person and getting a fee from one person, we could have a group of four people, five people, 10 people, even 15 people, all working on a particular area. So let me give you a really good example of this. Let's say you're a health coach and you develop a program or a group coaching series called uh, having a healthy, creating a healthy lifestyle. Great program to start, you know, around the new year or whatever and offering it in different formats at, you know, community centers, adult education centers, etc., where you bring people in that want to start creating more healthy lifestyles for themselves. And we can set up in a format, everyone pays a certain kind of fee to come in and we join together and it's a way that we have a sense of community. So the people that are going to come and sign up for your group coaching program around creating a healthy lifestyle. That's what their kind of goal is there. And we can set a community, a sense of community where we can all kind of interact together, learn from other people's experience. What's great about group coaching is again, it still follows the one-on-one -on -one coaching model. So this is not the time for the coach who gets to stand up in front of everyone and lecture about what a healthy lifestyle is. Well, you know, to have a healthy lifestyle, there's no more eating pizza, you know, no more haagen for you. It's, it's not a lecturing kind of process. It's so, if I was going to do a group coaching thing around this, we could, we could go. So what are the elements that are required to develop a healthy lifestyle? And I want maybe the people that are listening too can think about this. What would be whatever that topic is for them that they may be considering about doing a group coaching program around? What what are the makeup that you would need to attain, uh, you know, some progress in that area? So if it's going to be unhealthy lifestyle, if I went to a group and I said, so what do we need to have a healthy lifestyle? And someone might say, exercise fantastic. So you need some kind of form of exercise to have a healthy lifestyle. What else is there? Um, nutrition, of course. What are we putting into our body? Great. Is there anything else? Well, we need to have s some kind of social outlet or community. Great. So we have social outlet and community. Is there anything else in here? Someone might say spirituality. They might want to have think that that's a connection to having a healthy, great spirituality, something else, uh, stress management. Great. So what, what we're doing here is as a group coaching leader is where we can actually have our group create what this process is going to be around. And then when we look at what are we going to do on, let's say it's six sessions on creating a healthy lifestyle, we've actually had the group is setting out the foundation for what each one of the weeks when we get together, what is that going to be like? So when we get to week, let's say the, the first week's around the structure with our group, group coaching program. When we get to week number two, it's like, okay, so the first thing that we had here was uh, exercise or some kind of physical activity. What are your ideas? What works for you? What are your challenges with, what is everyone's challenges with getting out and exercise? We can talk about time problems and family and all these kind of things. But this is a great way to build synergy in the group with people are sharing, people are overcoming challenges, they're hearing how other people overcome challenges, etc. When we look at this, there's the, also the advantage of doing these type of group coaching programs is that generally that it's a good place to also get one-on-one -on -one coaching clients because it can also happen that while people are contributing, 
that we're looking at these problems together, someone might have some personal issues in one of these areas, something that they're not comfortable in sharing in their group. And often what will happen is someone will come up to the coach and say, you know, I really want, I'm um, having a relationship issue around that, this having me uh, struggling with reaching these goals. Could I, you know, work with you a little bit, etc. So it can be a great way to intake as an intake process for building our one-on-one -on -one coaching practices. You know, and that's so true because I've done many a presentation. I don't really like calling presentations. I like to call them sharing sessions where mm -hmm. people have come to me after and said, hey, you know something? Can we meet about this? Yes. And you and it's taking it for, it's sort of like funneling. You take the the, the macro and it becomes a micro. And yes. you have that situation. And it's also a great, um, I'm sure it's happened, anyone who's listening to this, when you do public speaking, you always have these people who come up to you after and want to get a little bit more. Yes, and absolutely. It's the same sort of thing. And I'm blessed to a, a number of presentations. And I've been blessed to have people come to me after and say, wow, like, can we can we have a conversation about that? And it's led into a client. Yes, absolutely. And it can go two different ways. So that's a great point that people will come to you after you're, after you're speaking and you do that. I, I sometimes encourage uh, uh, students or, or coaches to have a real intention when they speak. So it may be that they have a group coaching program in their mind. So when someone comes up to them and says, you know, I want to know more about this, one of the offers can be, well, why not, here's my card. Let's get together and talk about one-on-one -on -one coaching. Or I actually have a group program around this subject. And if you want to share your name, email address with me, I'm, I'm just getting this program together now and I have some details. And I'll, when we get this thing, all, uh, all the details worked out, I can send you this information. Because some people are ready that want to engage with coaches one-on-one. -on -one, but I can tell you there's a lot of people that, that right away, they may not be comfortable with that. Um, they may want to have like a little more of a buffer. They may, they feel better in a group of people as opposed to one-on-one. -on -one. So this is why it's just another way that we can connect to our audience in a different way. It's also going to be less expensive. So if someone wants to hire you one-on-one -on -one and they're, they're buying that one hour from you, that is going to have a high fee to it. If you're going to go and do a group coaching session with, let's say, 10 people and you're going to you're still going to do your hour or two hour sessions, that's going to be much less for everyone to then have that connection with you. And uh, that's another thing that Steve is a master of about the business. It's a coaching business. And as we always know, as coaches, we have to be ready for anyone who comes to us with any requests and Steve just laid it down there, how to be prepared because you could be doing a group coaching session and that one person comes to you. Don't think that they're just ready to do one-on-one. -on -one. They may want to do something a little bit different than what you're thinking. So you have to be prepared for their desire. Yeah. We call in marketing terms, it's called having a product funnel. Yes. So on the internet, most people are now used to this. They go to a website, and that's download my free ebook, learn about this, my, my free little class. And you put in your email address and your name, and then you get this. That's the start of a funnel. Now, what happens, we all know, is we get information, and then they're going to offer us a webinar, and then they're going to offer us this, and then they're going to offer us coaching. And, that you know, that's the start. And what we really, you know, stress with coaches is to start looking at your funnel. Because, and I can tell you from my personal experience, one-on-one -on -one coaching is great. It's tremendous. And, and as we said at the beginning, it's fun. However, if you're trying to generate all of your income on one-on-one -on -one coaching, one person sitting in front of you or on the phone, et cetera, after a while, it can lead to burnout. And that's what happened to me. You know, people think, well, gee, if I had six clients a day and I charge X amount of dollars and I had so many clients per week, great, I'll be able to get to my six figures or whatever that income that they're looking at. It gets tough to do that day after day after day. It actually can turn in, you know, a lot of times as, as coaches or before we became coaches, we wanted to leave the J-O-B, the job. Well, now what we've done is we've created our own job uh, that we have to do every single day, one-on-one -on -one with all these people. Isn't it great if we have different outlets 
different ways to make money where we're maximizing. One hour isn't just equal to X amount of dollars. One hour can be multiplied by having 10, 15 people, even eight people or whatever that number is into our coaching practice. And everyone who's listening, don't worry, we'll get into some of the more. There's a number of things we just shared there that are episodes in itself. So we'll move on because there's a lot of great thought process that Steve has to share, especially about the business of coaching. We'll get on in other conversations. Let's move forward in regards to team coaching. Okay. Sometimes there's kind of a, a misnomer around what's team coaching, group coaching. It's lots of people and people think it's the same thing. Uh, team coaching is, is a different concept and generally where there's a group of people that have a common goal. So let's say I go into an organization and there's a sales team and their goal is to raise uh, sales by X amount of percentage over the next three months. So what we do is we have people that are banded together with one common goal in, in one kind of place. So this differs from, from group coaching because sometimes people in group coaching, people could have different goals. Like my idea of having a healthy lifestyle could be losing 20 pounds. Someone else, it could be having more community around them. Someone else, it could be just getting to the gym once in a while. We could all have different goals, but with team coaching, it's very, it's much more focused into one area. So, what we do is, you know, we find what is that common goal and it gives us an opportunity then to work with people in that common goal. How do we do it? Is there different frameworks of some people focusing on certain areas or is it a group effort, et cetera? Excellent. I just want to ask, and you may or may not have an answer for this. You said for many, many years, one-on-one -on -one coaching was the prime yes. offer. Yes, yes. Was, was there a series of events or anything that you saw over the, your journey or in your studies of the coaching business that caused an explosion of group and team coaching? Was there, been, was there any reason why it exploded so much so rapidly? Um, I, I don't can't really point out to something specifically historically around it. I think it, it may have been brought on by the needs of the market. So if, if I have, let's say I'm coaching a manager in an organization and he's getting lots of value out of it and saying, gee, you know, this would be so great. I wish so-and-so was here and I wish so-and-so in our organization was here. You know, it, it's just kind of a natural procession to how can we have these conversations, these, these really powerful leadership, strong conversations with more people. How can we get those things out? Uh, and so that's where it, it, it started to form from. Okay, thanks. Thanks so much for answering that. And uh, you also want to talk about signature coaching. So signature coaching, I, I don't know if we really want to label it as coaching. It's, I, I'm going to say it's more of a marketing process that some coaches do. So if you have an expertise, particularly in coaching in one particular area, let's say it's leadership or relationships or communication, et cetera, one of the avenues that we can use to market ourselves is now called signature programs. So what we do is we develop this program around that niche. Let's say it, it is leadership. We go to an organization, we talk about that this is something that we're in our expertise in, et cetera, and we can come in and develop a signature program around leadership in their organization. Now, the reason I say that it's not coaching is because it's driven by us, kind of of the leader of this. So it's more of a marketing tool that we can use to offer an organization to hire us as coaches, come in and do some training and teaching around our, let's say it's leadership uh, processes, relationship processes, et cetera. And then from here, we can lead into, do we take this dynamic now into a team coaching offer, into a group coaching offer? And that's what generally happens. Having a coach having a signature program is kind of like a calling card. Because some people, it, it can be, sometimes people might not see how, what is that in into this organization? What is that in into this corporation? But if you have a signature, could your organization use some work on leadership? Could your organization use some 
uh, work around communication styles, etc. So to be able to come in, do a bit of training to open up more discussions so they can see how the potential of this could work and be more powerful inside of their organization can then open up that window for team coaching or group coaching. Excellent. I have some, some questions for you that are in my mind that have arisen from what you've shared with us on this episode. When a coach is starting off, mm -hmm. are there any signals or any things or do they, when do they know that it's right for them to diversify? Because you mentioned earlier on in our conversation that you can get burned out by doing one-on-one -on -one coaching. Yes. And also, I'm a new coach. I'm starting, at, like I'm not really, but I'm a new coach. I'm starting off. Steve said, okay, let's diversify. Let me just not do one-on-one. -on -one. Is it that easy to diversify when you're just coming out of the box? Actually, you're going to find this uh, uh, kind of odd that I'm going to say this, but for a lot of people just coming out of the box, just starting in coaching, and they want to start a coaching business, doing group coaching is actually is kind of a, a secret that a lot of people aren't aware of. So, you know, to get one-on-one -on -one clients, there's a, there, there's only so many different ways you can talk to people at work. You can have friends and family. You can have friends of friends and family of family and friends. And, you know, you're using your warm and your markets to kind of reach out. You can take people out and, and socialize and you can network with people. You know, that's that one-on-one -on -one coaching model. And for some people, it's great. They feel comfortable in that model. It's the way that they've done business before. They've done things and it works fantastic. But really the secret that I'm sharing with everyone is actually, I think the quicker line for many people is to do group coaching because there's so many avenues out there for people that want to come aboard. And there's also avenues for people that want to, that will help you with your group coaching. So if you're looking at, let's say, religious organizations, churches, um, synagogues, mosques, etc., and you're a coach and you have a specialization or, you, or your passion is around health or your passion is around relationships or passion around leadership or career change and things like that, and you go to one of these things, one of these organizations say, you know, I'm a, I'm a professional coach and I have a group coaching program. Do you think your congregation or participants would, would enjoy something around this? Oh, that'd be fantastic. Because these organizations want more, more the ability to bring their community together. And if you can be one of those people, you're going to be welcome. Now, what the beauty about this is, do you have to worry about space? No. <laughs> you know, they have space for you. Uh, you know, they have chairs for you. They may even have the coffee pot for you. You know, it's all set up for you. They also, who's going to market? If you're going to go into a church, and you're going to do a, a, a group coaching program on uh, relationships, how are you going to get the word out? Well, they have the email list. They have the, the posters. They have the newsletters that they send out every month. So there's no marketing or there's very little marketing for you to do as a coach. They're going to do that for you. You're going to talk to them about fees for what's kind of going to work in, 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 their, uh, in their area. And they're going to set up the space. They're going to help you set up the dates. They're, they're going to really be there as a support. So it's fantastic. The other area, and this, again, is something that I'm going to share with your audience, is adult education centers. So in most cities that I'm going to say that are medium to large size cities, what happens in the evenings? Uh, for a lot of the high schools and community colleges is they turn into adult education centers. Now, I know in my area, four times a year, I get sent a catalog from my area saying, uh, you know, come and learn how to do yoga, uh, buying your first home, come to this seminar, um, you know, want to learn how to use Facebook, come here. Well, in these things, they are really looking for people to to offer services and ex and group coaching services into these alt adult education centers. Again, here's the secret about this. It's not you trying to get people into this thing. They have their own marketing opportunities, and they're looking to get people to, you know, if they're run by the city, they want people to come in, 
use these spaces, pay for the fees, and they will market for you. Now, in exchange, you're going to do revenue sharing. So uh, let's say your six-week group coaching program on creating a great healthy lifestyle is $80. Now, they may take 30 or 40% of that. However, you're not doing anything except showing up and doing the group coaching thing, and you're going to get your check at the end. But what else do you get? And here's the thing that people miss. You're starting the relationship with these people. Now, if you're going to do another group coaching program on something else or the advanced program on creating a healthy lifestyle for you, you have these people. You now have a relationship with them. Some of them may hire you privately for one-on-one -on -one coaching. So this is, this is absolutely, to answer your question, a way that I encourage a lot of startup coaches to go as opposed to getting one-on-one -on -one clients because you will get one-on-one -on -one clients starting with group coaching. So it's interesting. It's almost like a reverse of what a lot of people may think that they yes. have to go one-on-one -on -one first and then bridge out, but you're saying yes. go wide and then funnel. Absolutely. It's different. But the reason we want to look at it is because however you're going to do this, we and I know sometimes marketing and business are considered dirty words in coaching because why are we doing this? Because we love interacting with other people. We get you know, our jollies and, our, and our, our joy from helping people improve themselves, move forward in their lives, overcome challenges, etc. A lot of coaches, that business side, that marketing side, it's like, mm, can I just hire someone to do that for me? Which, unfortunately, we can get some help with that and we can get coaching in that and etc. But it's really difficult to just say, here bring me clients, you know, as if somehow had someone had that magical uh, formula to just bring people clients. This way is another way to do it where you're having someone else using their community, whether it's a, you know, church, synagogue, mosque community, or it could even be a, a community around um, issues. If it's recovery issues around uh, substance abuse, you're using other people's communities to advertise and, and bring you people. And then they're going to be doing it. They're going to be taking some of the pressure. And then you can build your, your, uh, your practice like that. We have had several, many, many of our coaches come through the school that have built brilliant coaching practices using this, using this process. Excellent. Well, that is the end of another epic conversation on Learn to Be a Coach series. And you know something? We could go longer because when Steve speaks, I listen and I'm copying on different things. But I said, no, we'll save it for another time. We'll save it for another time. But he gave some, as always, some great nuggets. And as I like to say, Steve drops knowledge bombs. So <laughs> it's it, it, another great conversation. Steve, I'd like to thank you for taking the time out of your positive productive schedule to share with the audience. If people want to get in touch with you, how can they do that? Well, first of all, you're very welcome. And you know, the reason we do this together, because I love coaching. I love the effects of people of changing people's lives and not even changing, you know, the person's life that you're talking with, but think about how that is going to ripple through that person's interactions with their friends and family and coworkers. That's what we're doing as coaches is we're, we're having massive changes with the person we're working with, but also in their influence and the people that are around them. So to contact me, basically two of the best ways is first of all, just go to our main website, the coach training academy.com and make sure you put in the, the coach training academy.com, or you can go to our other website, learn to be a coach.com that one has a special sign up form where you can you know get a little information about coaching and a and a little introductory coach on a course on coaching excellent thanks again steve it is dr vibe host and producer of the award-winning the dr vibe show as always, if you want to touch base with me, sorry, I almost lost my voice there because I was so I wanted to share so get Steve to share so much more, but we're gonna cut it on this one. <laughs> but uh, you can you can listen to replays of my audio epic conversations via my website, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Tuned In Radio, Stitcher Radio, Google Play Music Store. You can hear selected audio conversations at thegoodmanproject.com and also WJMSRadio.com. 
uh, you can catch a lot of all my YouTube conversation replays at the YouTube channel with now 250 subscribers. And people may say, hey, that isn't a lot. But three months ago, I had none. So wow. it's going in the right direction. Yes. And also, I am also a certified empowerment coach. If you would like to get a complimentary 30-minute empowerment session with me, reach out to me at drvibeshow, Twitter-wise, email-wise, dr. period vibe at the drvibeshow.com, and also you can go to the website. Also, know I'm a brand ambassador for the only African American magazine that focuses on African Americans in food, wine, and travel. And that is called CuisineNoirMagazine.com. I think that's it. So as I always like to say, we love the journey of learning to be a coach because I'm learning so much. I hope you are too. Two last things. Live your life as a dream. If you can dream it, you can make it. And finally, sometimes you have to get smaller to get stronger. And if you have any questions for Steve, certainly email them to me and we will certainly answer them. And as he's again trending on my website which is an outstanding thing so god bless peace be well keep the faith and thanks for listening we appreciate it